Alrighty, so to modernize one of these, the first thing you're going to want to do is take all of this off of the tanker helmet that it comes on. Uh, I can't really show you that part because I already did it and I left the tanker helmet at home. But it's just leather straps on these buckles for the transformer. And then for this, there's like a wing nut that holds that center piece on to the main mount. And then there's like a couple P clamps holding the wires to the frame. But all you're gonna need for that is a thin blade flathead screwdriver and uh, maybe some pliers to get the wing nut because sometimes they're really tight, but mine were actually pretty easy to get off. But so now what we're gonna wanna do is shorten the power cable for the transformer. And the easiest way to do that is to just cut it but if you don't have one of these bad boys a power source um, it's going to be difficult for you to figure out which wires in this cable are positive and negative because there are seven white unlabeled wires in here so the best way to do that is to cut this cable open this up and then hook up your power source to the circuit board and then take a voltmeter back and figure out which wires are positive and which wires are negative and my buddy's gonna help me with that because he did it last time and he did it pretty fast um so we're gonna use that method um if you don't have access to something like that your pnv 57e should come with an adapter um that plugs into this so you can plug that adapter into this cut the wire on the adapter and then it's just a positive and negative wire so you can wire the 9 volt battery holder into that adapter wire instead of um, cutting this power cable and, and maybe not figuring out not being able to figure out which wire goes to what um, the only downside of that is you're going to have all this extra cable um, but that's another way to do it. But for this, um, I'm going to do it the easier, cleaner, simple way. Well, not simpler, but definitely a cleaner install. I'm not going to need this spring, so I'm going to try my best to remove it. Okay, so once you get this cut, um, you end up with seven unlabeled white wires instead of what I was expecting the first time I did this just two positive or a positive and negative um, so now the only way to know the polarity of these is to open this transformer up and then hook a power source up to it and work backwards with a voltmeter so we're going to do that now Deal. Alrighty. There's the circuit board for the transformer. Um, this one looks really clean. The last one I opened up looked like it had been opened a few times. I think this one may have been unissued, this set of... But uh, it doesn't come all the way out because you got like some kind of a... Ground, I guess, would be what that is. Some coveted Cosmoline. Oh, that's the good stuff. Okay. Oh, if you do order one of these and it's completely covered in Cosmoline. I would say acetone and a rag, because they're pretty well sealed, but yeah. Um, and honestly, something I'm probably going to do um, is take a layer of RTV silicone once I get all this Cosmoly cleaned off and go around the edge just to give it a nice, uh, a nice waterproof 
dust proof seal just a little extra peace of mind but yeah that's about that um there's usually a diagram in here that tell you a little bit about the circuit board like where to hook up positive and negative um, I don't see one on here but I think I have one saved on my phone so just give me a second to pull that up so to find your polarity you're gonna need a multimeter with continuity checker um, you put so this is gonna be your negative there's four wires that are attached to this point. Um, I actually already got them separated here, but you'll see each one of them reads a short circuit to this point. So those are all your gonna become your negative terminal. And then you see this little point right here, there's uh, three wires that come here and then solder onto this little tab right here. That's going to be where you check for your positive wires. And then you'll see there's three wires here for your posi. And then twist those together. And I just got a 7.7, .7, just an arbitrary voltage. And then it comes right on. Tubage. Awesome. All right, once you've got your box put back together, find some shrink tube that's the appropriate size to go over all of this. Looks like that one's going to do just fine. Should make a nice seal up around that cable. So, um, let's see. Battery box. Where did my battery box go? So, got my battery box. Um, got these on Amazon. They're really cheap. You can get 10 of them for like $10. I'm sure you could get them from like a, oh, I'm trying to think. Like a bulk electronics store, like Crawford Electronics, I think is what it's called online. You can get really cheap stuff from them, but you pretty much got to buy in bulk. So if you were going to do a ton of these, I would get them in bulk. These are little screws that hold the door closed on that. I did bring a battery, but it's in my helmet. Um, but yeah, the battery just kind of snaps in. But, yee. Alright, so once you get these to the length that you desire, and you get these to the length that you desire. Um, this is how long they come from the factory. This is how long I want them. Just hook them up, solder them, and then you're pretty much done for the electronics part. The rest is just tedious adapters and little tiny screws and Velcro and whatnot. And I will show you that. But now I'm going to solder this up and then uh, move on to the next part. Alrighty, now that you've got everything soldered together, connected to your battery box and heat shrinked, you can pop your battery in. Can you, there's a 9 volt battery in that helmet. Can you hand it to me? I didn't know you were recording. Yeah. Pop your battery in. These are kind of tricky. You kind of got to line the terminals up first and then wedge it with your finger. And if you can't, you can always just make sure it's in there with a screwdriver or a butter knife or something. And then the on button, make sure they come on. They do. Cool. Cool. And then when I get home, I have some Velcro. Then I'll take this and just pop her on there like that. Oh, well, actually, the Velcro will go on the lid. like that and it'll just sit there like that and then i'll have a nice switch right there i'll probably put some rtv silicone around that so it doesn't get water in there any more than normal 
But yee, that's about all you have to do for the electronics part. Um, now next, I will show you how to mount those to a Rhino adapter. Alright, so I've already done this part, but um, these screws right here, uh, they hold... Crap, where did I put that? Right here. They hold the bottom piece of this um, rhino on. So, and there's some little springs that go between the screw and the hole. But just take the screws out. Don't lose these. Don't lose these screws because you'll need them to put this on. But you just take that off, and then. Uh, I think it's a two millimeter Allen wrench, and screw this in. Okay, so once you have the base screwed on um, to the Rhino, you can take your tubes. <clears throat> And this part is super annoying. Let me make sure I get the right way around. Okay, so that's the folded up position. So I actually want them like this. So I'm going to, wait, hold up. Let me think about this. Okay, what's that? Yeah, that's the okay like that also I'm pretty sure this rhino is a Chinese copy because isn't normally all the data right here lasered in but this is a sticker on the back side I'm probably gonna ask for a return because the description said authentic and it said it was used, but this is definitely just a brand new clone, which is frustrating because the last Rhino I bought for 50 bucks on eBay was the real deal. It was super crusty, but it worked. Alright, and the best way to do this is to kind of um, set it up so that on the back side you got the Rhino leaning up against this center stem and then just kind of try to line it up and start screwing one in oh that's not lined up All right, let's wrap this video up. So, once you have it mounted on your Rhino, um, screwed in like like that, um, it's pretty much just like regular Western setup. Just clips into the shroud, and then. Deploys, and then you can uh, you know adjust all the distances and stuff to your specific needs, and then I haven't come up with a good mounting solution for the transformer yet. So just for now, I've been using zip ties. I have some thicker ones at home that I'll put on, but this is all my buddy had here tonight. Um, I'd like to get a lid snake for this. That would clean that up a lot. But I definitely want to work on a mounting, a better mounting solution for the transformer. Something that can quickly um, be put on and taken off. Just like the shroud on the front. 
Um, maybe I'd even use a shroud and a Naruto's base. Maybe. I don't know. Um, something I need to work on. Maybe some kind of a rail system. Um, maybe like two arc rails and then it just... Or not arc rails, but uh, pickets any rails and then it would just slide on. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know if you want to modernize a set of PNV 57Es. Um, if anybody wants the files for the, uh, the adapter, just send me a PM either on Facebook or I guess drop your email in the comments or something. I don't think you can PM on YouTube, but yeah. I hope this was helpful to some of you guys.